Here is an amplifier and streamer from Denmark, which are made by audio legends Lars Christensen and Michael Borison under the Aavik Acoustics brand. They produce high-end audio equipment under two more brands, Borison Acoustics, these are speakers, and Ansus Acoustics, cables, power systems, audiophile switches, etc. I usually call the products of these brands the audiophile Formula One, because the first is that they really borrow technologies and materials that are used in motorsport, the second is that they have a very fast and accurate sound. However, I can't call these two components Formula One. Rather, they are specimens of Formula E, one of the youngest and most promising classes of electric car racing. Here are just a couple of Danish handcrafted ballads that perfectly illustrate the future of high-end audio. So, these are the most basic components in the X80 series. The amplifier is called I180 and the streamer is S180. There are also middle tier models with indexes 280 and top models with indexes 580 in the series. Moreover, interestingly, all these components are absolutely identical. All three amplifiers have the same power output of 300 watts per channel at 8 ohms and 600 at 4 ohms. THD plus noise at 0.006%, the same number of inputs and outputs and design. The same is true for streamers. However, there are differences between them in power supplies. And this is where the IVIC noise reduction system comes in. It is a proprietary system built using two types of active Tesla coils. The quantity determines the component level. For example, in this 180 amplifier there are 36 and 96 of them, in the 280 there are 72 and 168, and in the top one there are 108 and 240 Tesla coils. Well, plus a copper chassis and a top cover with a titanium anti-resonance element inaccessible to the first two models. By the way, what is interesting is that the previous generation of IAVIC amplifiers were as versatile as possible. They had built-in decks, phono stages and all that. But on this line the concept has changed. Practice has shown that demanding users prefer to get all these modern features in separate components. So, in addition to the amplifier and streamer, the line also has a separate phono stage and a separate deck in exactly the same cases. As befits a racing ballet, these bodies are unlike anything mass produced these days. Avic is either trying to set new standards or they just don't care what the audiophile community thinks of them. All of their components always look as far removed from the mainstream as possible and for this I like them so much. For these futuristic cases, instead of traditional aluminum, a new composite material was used, which almost completely eliminates hysteresis, a reaction to some external influences, dynamic or electromagnetic. This natural-based composite with a dense structure of various fibers, including wood, is better suited for high-end audio components. To the touch it is very dense, clunk, according to my subjective feelings, it doesn't look like either metal or wood. The width of the cases is pretty unusual, 384 mm or 15 inches. It doesn't fit any of the standard sizes. At the corners of the top and bottom panels there are special adapters for darks, anti-resonance discs manufactured by the satellite company ANSUS, the one that produces audiophile switches, cables, etc. Here are the darks. There are three titanium discs with titanium balls between them. The adapter has special recesses into which you place the same titanium balls and install the dark discs on them. Or you can simply put the components on the titanium balls. Well, how do you like it, Elon? But of course, you've been looking at these front panels all this time while I'm chatting here Formula E, blah blah blah. I know it's my favorite too. 
Bright displays with large red cells just disarm you at first, but then the tactile pleasure of this volume knob is added to this visual enjoyment. It's the absolute best knob I've ever touched. It's heavy and as you spin it, you feel like it's damn solid piece of steel, not some chrome-plated hipster plastic for wimps. Inexpressible fetish feeling. Danes, what are you doing with me? Stop it! All controls are as simple as possible, you have only three buttons and it's impossible to get confused. Another interesting point is that mains cables are not included with AVIC equipment. In Denmark, these cheap black cables that everyone puts in boxes are banned at the legislative level. I'm lying, of course, but if you are a true audiophile, then you should have your own audiophile-grade cables. Well, in addition, you'll probably be offered to buy related ANSUS mains cables for a couple of thousand dollars. Another funny moment is the remote control. Here you are looking at all this racing audiophilia and now try to imagine what a cool and unusual remote control this should have. Imagine! Now get ready, this show isn't for sissies. Yes, it's the ordinary Apple remote that Macs come with. And no, I don't know the answer to the question, what is it all about? Nevertheless, the amplifier is controlled by this. Now one more thing you guys don't expect. Let's take a look at what they have on the back panels. Well, do you think there was a scattering of XLRs and AES EBUs? But no, everything is quite simple and modest. Only RCA sockets and the streamer also has a fairly modest necessary minimum. There is not even a single digital input, so you can't use it as a high-end deck for external transport. The maximum is to hook up a hard drive via USB. Sorry honey, it's not about you, but we can only have one transport. The streamer doesn't have an Apple remote, so you'll need a tablet to install iVix proprietary control software. I'll tell you a secret, this is a flipped M connect with a Danish logo. So in principle you can use the original application, well not so original. In any case, the app is clean and simple. It supports Tidal, Kobos, Spotify, the Quantillion internet radio stations and all your file shares on the local network are also available. Although the responses of the application aren't the most lightning fast, it's quite bug-free, stable and simple. Under the hood it's like a race car. Everything looks really, really cool and very modern. For example, this amplifier works in class D. What? Were you waiting for pure class A? No, guys, outside, in case you haven't noticed, it's the 21st century. Here high-end amplifiers are already working in class D. That's why I called the RV components Formula E. Orthodox A and AB is just fine, but this is a hydrocarbon Formula 1. And the future, as we all already understand, belongs to electric vehicles, whether we like it or not. Personally, I like the remote control of the car from a smartphone and high energy efficiency. Everything is very advanced inside, as you can see. But I won't even try to explain how everything works there and why all these technologies with terrible abbreviations like UMAC, PWM, Deezer circuits and anti-resonant coils are here. I don't really understand myself. One fact is enough for me. Behind these devices is Michael Borison, who is in charge of R&D, and this is the audiophile Adrian Newey. By the way, the lack of XLRs didn't let me go, and I didn't find anything better than asking this question to Borison himself. I decided that since he made it up, let him explain why he decided not to use balanced connections. And this is what he answered me. For professional stage use of balanced cables is better or preferred as you have long cable runs with bundles of different signals running side by side. For hi-fi single-ended is very much the better choice. This is primarily due to the fact that most hi-fi equipment, ours included, is designed around single-ended circuits, balanced more that doubles the noise. This means all the equipment I know of has converters for the balanced signals, like single-ended to balanced at the line outputs and similar balanced to single-end balanced to single-ended at the line input. Here at Avic, 
We believe in the KISS concept of keeping circuits as simple as possible, but not simpler than necessary. Thus, we avoid all conversations and keep all single-ended with one stable ground reference throughout our electronic designs. This is the best possible way to design for low noise and no leakage to keep dynamics intact. I think it's exhaustive. In this regard, I want to draw attention to one more unusual thing in the design. A couple of years ago, Lars Christensen, looking into my eyes with undisguised aggression, said, We hate noise. We hate fucking noise. And that's why here all these Tesla coils, which came from related ANSYS equipment, are the most obvious strangeness and at the same time a key component of the Danes philosophy. They hate noise and fight it with these very Tesla coils that reduce high frequency interference. They fight quite effectively, but more on that later. Well, what kind of magical scening can you expect from bringing this home and finding a couple of mains cables for them? Well, when you are not a professional racer, but a damn amateur, you can't do without incidents. And when I just turned it all on for the first time, I was struck by how dry and almost lifeless the sound was from my speakers. Just terrible. To cut a long story short, this amplifier will annoy you for the first 20 minutes at least, until the output stages warm up. It even has a special section in the menu that shows the temperature, and until it reaches at least 35 degrees Celsius, everything will be, well, so-so. Then the sound quality will literally improve in front of your eyes every minute, and only when the temperature starts to approach 40 degrees will you get the optimal sound. What is it like? First of all, I was struck by the transparency with which these AVEX perform and the exceptional purity. So, the sound of the album named Antenna by the Belgian dub band Cosmo Sound with all this transparency feels like some kind of life, because you don't have the feeling that there are frequencies that sound worse than others. They really don't exist. Everything is detailed and extremely clearly drawn from the deepest basses to, it seems, ultrasound. But these are just my assumptions, because I can't hear above 16.5 kHz. Thanks to such transparency, you get the opportunity to endlessly trip out with different ambient and boring subtle cinematic music. For example, Brian Eno's gorgeous mini-album film music science fiction with five great tracks. You just can't get away from it all. It's like watching Kubrick's A Space Odyssey for the first time, nothing less. The Ivy components allow you to hear everything down to the smallest detail, which is especially important in such music. All these subtle, barely perceptible sounds are carefully preserved here and are fed to the speakers with some transcendent resolution. I have never heard every little thing so clearly on these speakers. It feels like everything is audible to every atom. And immediately the thought that arises in my head. Well, no, I couldn't upgrade my hearing abilities. Or could I? And why ambient sounds cool? It's impressive how deep and hollow graphics the Danish components are. In the final composition of an ending, all these ambient howls and hums are literally materialized and float smoothly in front of you in space, like cosmic jellyfish in the depths of the universe. When you listen to something more similar to the usual music with instruments, you notice that in addition to purity and three-dimensionality, Avik is very emotional. On the one hand, the sound is not colored, but not quite. It enhances the drama and nervousness in Without You Am Nothing performed by Placebo and Bowie due to the slightly more accentuated cymbals. There is a tendency to sound bright and to deliver treble slightly aggressively with these Dynodio speakers if the recording requires it. At the same time, on non-aggressive music like the 2021 Mogwai album, you won't notice this harshness. Avik will be rather soft and dark, with tasty, elastic and fast punch, fat six textured guitars, soft vocals and super comfortable rustling cymbals. Completely different signature. In general, no matter what you listen to, these components are, on the one hand, quite monitor-like, accurate, clear and very fast. But the sound doesn't feel dry or something like that. On the other hand, you always have a great separation of instruments, 
a wide, deep scene and damning dynamics, so that the music captivates and draws you in endlessly. Bottom line, with their complex design, these are extremely simple and home-friendly components. They are pleasant and easy to use, and in any rack they will be a real eye-catcher. By their appearance, these components symbolize the future, which it turns out has already arrived. True, not yet for all of us. You'll need tens of thousands of dollars to have them.